Yo, 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 what's up everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie comic interview. This is our second one of the day, new comic book day, let's go. And we are keeping it geekly with our good friend Nathaniel of Ubies. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. This is your first official interview, man. So let's uh, let's let's get it going. Let's get the party started. My first one, man. You never forget your first. Man, I'm drinking water, please. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> so how are you? Welcome, man. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, and let's uh, let's get to kind of breaking down the walls of Ubies and what inspired it. All right, cool. My name is Nathaniel Villanueva. You can call me Nate. Um, I love pigs. I love comic books. Um, I've been writing for about, I want to say, seven years now. But uh, in many different things, I was a screenwriter. I wanted to be a novelist growing up uh, as a teenager. So mm -hmm. I wanted to do that. Didn't work out. Moved to screenwriting. I got to work on some really fun like fan projects for like Spectacular Spider-Man, Gravity Falls, stuff like that, continuations. And uh, in the process, I gained this love for writing comic books. And I already so did love awesome. comic books. So like, just, this is just like right up my alley, like writing so, comic books right now. That's what I want. You said uh, your first endeavor was uh, trying to write a uh, novel and it didn't work out for you? No, no, I just like novels, like for me at least, like novels are a, a big time investment. So like one, I wasn't, I was trying to buy it off way more than I could chew. What know? was it about? So it was, I had many ideas for a novel, but like this novel was, a uh, very self-insert like oh man <laughs> guy in new school nobody likes him oh but he's amazing you know nobody nobody can see that but i can see that we can just hope one of your one, one, one of them would read it and you're like get to know me <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would hope i would hope like finally i'm understood uh no no so yeah it was mostly that yeah pretty cringe so cool. we went from self-injecting yourself into a novel to creating a, di a diverse team of not so super powered teens how, how did we see that transition happen you know we're seeing you know something where you were trying to inject yourself into a novel uh to a, a team like do each of these like uh characters have just little bits of yourself that you maybe uh, put in there oh yeah definitely like i love these characters with all my heart and being and Part of it is like narcissistic. It's like, oh yeah, of course I do. Uh, I put a little bit of myself in each one of them. There's a little facet of like stuff that you struggle with. Um, like that's especially that's what um, for the characters, like what their individual arcs and what they need to learn and what they need to grow in. Like that stuff, like I could see little bits and pieces of like, oh, I struggle with this. So I want to give this character that or like, um, for example, like Doomer, like he's a guy that he struggles a lot uh, with like asserting himself. He has like problems, like saying no to people. And that's like something I struggle with growing up. So I'm like, that's easy for me to like write that. And that's easy for me to like uh, progress it. Cause even though, you know, you might still struggle with that. It's like, it's a happy story. It's like, I want to write a better story for this character. This is a story I wish I was going through right now. You know, Man, so you only agree to the interview because you have a hard time saying no. Oh, I oh, I've, been, I've been found out. <laughs> so, uh, who's your favorite character? Which one would you say you identify with the most? Uh, I love. I probably man. If you ask me that like ten different days, like I'll give you ten different questions. I really do love Tabitha. Like uh, out of everyone, I love all of them. I love mm -hmm. all of them. But I think Tabitha has like just this really tenacity like that i love a lot cause it's so crazy like she she gets the luck of the draw either she's gonna be 50 you know it's like 50 50 right exactly 50 yeah, 50. it's exactly 50 50 like that's so what, what made you do that like that seems kind of like uh like domino from uh Do like from deadpool um yeah, but instead almost, of always being lucky like it's just half of that well honestly it was like it was like two-face like i love that gimmick i love that the Batman villain of Two-Face. Mm -hmm. I love the gimmick of him flipping the coin. And based on the coin flip, you know, um, 
it decides what he does, good or bad. Like, I want to, like, let's take that to the extreme. Like, what if everything someone did was a coin flip? But, like, so we're, we're talking like flip. everything, like tying the shoes to like writing on a piece of paper. Yeah, basically. Like, she just, <laughs> that's what I was saying. Like, this, she has this tenacity. That's, I think I put it in the campaign, like, in the little bur blurb for her intro. It's like, she doesn't beat the odds, the odds beat her. You know, yeah. it's like this constant struggle with it. But she always gets back up. She always keeps trying, you know? And that's, uh, it, 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 it just seems like there'd be like so much potential with that. Like, fights with villains could just go horribly wrong and then horribly right and and just everything in between i mean what 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 else can we expect from this team we, we got tabitha but there's there's a wide variety of different characters yeah like there's that's really something that i i, I cared a lot about when i make the team like mm, i there's a lot of new superheroes that like they get created and like their defaults like oh they're just super strong they punch people that's their power you know I wanted a team where like each team a member could have their own particular skill set and their own particular like strengths and weaknesses. Um, like I love Magnolia. Her power isn't the strangest one, but it is one of the more difficult ones because she has the power of magnetism, which sounds great, but she has to like physically touch the object. So that gets tricky. So say like someone oh man there's a guy and he has a gun oh i gotta use my magnetism on that gun wait i gotta touch that gun i gotta grab it to get out of his hands so is she like able to like change like the magnetic charge of like iron in the earth or do it doesn't does it go that extreme it's everything bro it's everything. okay so yeah if it was like a desk and she changed the polarity to be negative and she changed the polarity of something else to be positive like she can move that desk but like it's 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 uh it has a diminishing effect in my mind at least it has a diminishing effect like she can't just like touch two buildings and then they collapse on each other yeah 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 <laughs> yeah i got you when she's trying to do too much at once it starts to like get too weak yeah exactly. so um give us give us a couple other how, how many in total are we looking at we're looking at nine my man nine. We're looking so, at nine. I, I guess give us like the next like top two um and then we can start diving into a little bit more about uh like the sto like the story and the idea Okay, top two. I love, I love Justin. Justin is headlights. He's the co-leader of the team. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly because I love, uh, I love Cyclops. I won't, I won't lie to you. I love Cyclops. So I love the the vision going out. I love that uh, image in comic books. It's, it's such an iconic look, you know. Like, yeah. So his flat, his power is being a flashlight. His eyes turn bright, and they can illuminate a room they could I, stun I, a person i needed that every time i played pokemon it wanted me to ruin a pokemon by teaching it flash could i use this guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so like he and it will get uh man like and the thing is like i do want these powers to like evolve not mm -hmm. like in getting stronger but becoming more useful so like, yeah and I think it's kind of like what you're doing right now is a, a smart approach. Like they're just starting out. So why not have them kind of just be like this? And then as you go on through the series, you can start to really hone them and start to really, I guess, make them unique. Like what what type of ability do you foresee him having um, like later on issues like going from being, you know, a flashlight to like what type of abilities? So I really do like I love the idea of light being on a spectrum because light is so many other things. So like I have this idea that like he can turn his like his light bulb flash into like this UV light sort of so like he can see and like scan a room for like clues. And that like, is oh. awesome, dude. So that's something. That's something. I won't give away too much else because I got I got something that works. But, yeah, there, there's a lot you could do with light too. I mean, um, outside of just have it being blinding, uh, a lot of different uh, fast uh, faucets to it. Did I say that right? Facets. facets? Facets, yes. I had it right the first time. Um, yeah, that you yeah, could yeah. that, that you could really play on it. But um, let's go ahead. Uh, let's not shy away from it. What's what's the last one? Uh, is it going to be maybe Speeder? No, it's not Speeder. I, I'm going to say Callie. I love Callie. Her uh, her is Brain Food, I believe. Brain Food is her name. I should know this. I made her. Um, <laughs> I love Brain Food because her power is like she eats a book and she gets. The knowledge from the book i love that like it's does she like so, does she get like any sort of like indigestion from that like a whole book oh absolutely like absolutely <laughs> <laughs> there's uh that's like part of the fun like it's a physical 
I, I don't want like I want it to be cartoonish, but I mm-hmm. also want them like to have like real consequences from their actions. So if she just like chomped down a whole book, you know, it's like, oh man, I can't eat lunch because I'm mad uh, queasy from this book that I just so- learned. Are we gonna maybe see her ever take like a like a USB snack or something? Like maybe start going on to like more digital like uh pl- like platforms? No, no, no. It has to be a just, book. It has, has to, to be, be a book. A book. <laughs> uh, I had this like idea for a joke where like she's like, oh, this is taking mad long to like eat this entire book. What am I gonna do with it? So like she has what she does is she blends the book and she drinks it like a smoothie, sort of like that. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so what, what what inspired what inspired a uh, brain food? Why not bookworm? Bookworm, I like the idea of like brain food and like man, there was another one too. I was like really debating between like two different names for her because I think most of the names came pretty easily to me when it came to uh, their powers. You know, like mm-hmm. headlights, that's flashlight, that's easy. Polarity, that's magnetism, that's easy. Brain food. I like the idea. It was that or number cruncher. I was going to that or number cruncher, but number okay. cruncher like sounds a little too brutal. It does sound a little bit more brutal, and it's like a little bit more about math. It's like hmm, this girl's like really good at math. It's like no, she's not really good at math. She just eats the food. Uh, she yeah. eats the eats the books. It gets brain food. So, but. Uh, Bookworm would have been good too. Been good too. <laughs> so, how do we see these guys meet? Like, what I guess, what type of origin story can you offer us without spoiling too much? It's not really too much of a spoiler because, like, it's in the first fifteen pages of it. Like, I really wanted these guys to come together as quickly as possible, and like me and Marcus, the guy uh, editor and head in chief of Odyssey Comics, the person publishing the comic book. We had these discussions where like, hmm, you know, nine characters in one book plus a villain is a lot to do you yeah, know, in 30 yeah. pages. So we're like, maybe we could introduce them later on. But I was like, no, we have to do it all at once. Because once we have it all at once, we have that chemistry. We have that, like, those personalities in the bowl. We can mix the bowl, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so how are you able to... Uh to flesh them out properly with having so many it 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 does seem like a quite a bit um to uh, include early on um and you say it's within the fi- first 15 pages so like wh- what did you do to kind of like i guess like start kind of like setting the tone for each character and their personalities uh that was a hard hit that was a hard sell honestly just because yeah like it's nine characters it's a lot so uh i went i cheated a little bit i just basically i cheated a little bit so most of the characters they meet at this one spot. It's a gymnasium. It's a high school gym mm-hmm. uh, because our leader of the UBs at the time, Justin, aka Headlights, he's trying to recruit this team of these powered individuals with the people with the Y gene uh, to create this super team that he thinks is going to change the world. You know, instead of like annoying the world. Um, so that just helped that helped like all of them come together and they all have a reason for being there that will get like more expanded on Mm -hmm. in future issues and that is true like how we make it like their personality stand out and i really do feel like the way you can make personality stand out is by like contrast like compare contrast if you have someone that's loud you know in a room by themselves that's just loud but you put them next to a quiet person you can tell the differences between them. So like, yeah, I really uh, wanted to uh, have these conflicting personalities where they're always butting heads and you can see what their personalities are based off that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, of course, you're not gonna get everything of everyone in 30 pages of comic books, but it hopefully will give you enough to like, hey, I like this guy, you know, he's a funny dude. Yeah, I like that girl. She's kind of sarcastic, So. You know? What is Yubizo? though? Like, what, what what does that word mean? How did you create that? Like, where where did uh where did your inspiration come from? So, uh, Yubis, uh, as you can see, probably from the, the image and like the campaign and all this and that, like promo stuff. Like, uh, it's very much inspired by X Men, and I love that. I love the call that they have. You know, to me, my X Men. You know, we had Charles saying that you got 
Scott saying that. You've got Soren saying that. Like, it's a rallying call. So I wanted, whatever the team was going to be, I wanted them to have a rallying call. I worked backwards on this. I, like, I want to have the cool rallying call first, <laughs> and then I'll come up with the team name. Uh, so the rallying call, uh, like, I kept thinking about it. I wanted to be you be something, you be something. And I'm like, you be, you know, just like that. You be. It's like, you be a you be, I be a you be. You know, so that was that's how it sort of came to be, and like I like it now. Like I, well, yeah, of course I like it. I love it because like it can mean the name itself doesn't mean anything, but the phonetically it says UB, so it could be like UB amazing, UB yeah, fantastic, yeah. UB something special, you know. So how did you come up with the word though? Did you, you did you see that in like an X Men comic? Um. No, no, like it really was just like me thinking of like, and I, I'm not saying I'm not smart enough and like that, but like just. Oh, you just you just put you just put those two words together and then you just spelled it like kind of how it sound. Yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Like, I gotcha. I didn't want to put. I didn't want it to be too like too on the nose of like Y O U B E. Mm-hmm. You know that sound like it's like. Mm, no, it, you, you fooled me. I thought it was like a completely different like new word. I was like, dude, this is not I don't think I've ever seen this word before. Um. So yeah, what, what I gotta ask? What's your favorite X Men? My favorite X Men, oh, it's Rogue. Without a question, Rogue's Rogue. awesome. She's the best. I love her. She's a Southern girl. I love it. And uh, yeah, it's yeah. so raw too. Like it's so hard for her to have like a relationship because like you know anyone she touches, she messes up. That's what I'm saying. Like her power has a drawback. Like she has this immense, like super useful power, but it has this incredible drawback to yeah it, you know? like, yeah it's a it's a balance to it and that's something i really feel like so many so many comic book not comic book, like superheroes like they lack they don't lack a weakness anymore you mm-hmm. know superman he was created gave him kryptonite you know as a balance it's like oh yeah uh he's super strong you can do this and that but he still has a weakness he has to watch out he has a think strategize get his mm-hmm. way out of situations that's the fun part you know uh, um so yeah, same thing for Rogue too. It's like, oh man, she can do all these amazing things, but she can't touch them. Comes at you a know, price. I, you saying that it just brings uh, Logan to mind, where we see Professor uh, Xavier losing his mind, and because of that, it's like it's causing him to like to like break his surroundings. Some of the most intense like emotions, like because you just see this genius who's able to do so much, and as soon as he starts losing his mind, like how powerful that mind actually is. Like when like everyone around him is not able to breathe or move, like it's just insane. Right? It's like these. It's it's the power of the power fantasy. Uh, like rarely ever gets that like notch of like realism to it. Not realism, but like you know, you know what I mean. I think it's realism. I, I I think like when you start looking at, at it like that, if I was to look at someone who had powers like Professor X, and then like what would happen if he started losing his mind? Mm-hmm. I I would picture stuff like that, like just like like in the way they nodded to um, him killing a bunch of people early on, and that's kind of like what led to it. Um, like I, I I think they did a good job of, of doing that, like that more that that mortality feel to it like how yeah like the, it has the, a certain logic to it like it has yes. an internal logic to it yeah i i agree i like that honestly like we need, we need a little bit more of that we need a little bit more of that in uh in comics i love uh i'll go on a little tangent i love this comic book sideways it was dc published um and his power was he could make like these portals that could teleport him basically anywhere you know and i was like man that's an awesome idea i love that idea um but he also got like super strength and he got like super speed on top of that too it's like ah now he can just like punch his way out of fights it's like it would have been fun to like see him making portals to like use that more in combat rather than just Mm -hmm. like oh i'm gonna just beat up this guy because i can you know they did uh dc did this thing uh this run with uh, with damage um which was like dc's version of the hulk and yeah, uh, like, that basically like he had like a time limit so he could he was a regular human and then he would transform and he'd be like this this weapon and uh it would only be for like a few hours and then he would be convert and then he'd be out of the game for x amount of hours and i thought that was a really awesome like it flopped though i think they they, they canned it but it, the idea i thought was really cool because he was just like insane invincible and then as soon as you seen his clock starting ticking down he was like he like it was very real he was about to get killed and like it was just insane like the way they're able to balance that 
Yeah, man, it creates stakes. It creates drama. We love seeing our yes. heroes push to the edge and so, come back on the other side victorious. All right, so you are at $1,171 of $800, 61 backers with five days to go. Congratulations, man. That is awesome. You said you virtually did all of this uh, with no help, right? Uh, like you really didn't do a lot of Twitter advertising. This was your first interview, so you haven't done a lot of like talk shows. Like, what have you done? Like, how how did you get this number? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did do some spamming. I did do some Twitter spamming. Uh, I'm I'm opposed to it. Not opposed to it, but like it, it doesn't agree with me. Um, I don't think advertising really agrees with much anyone. Um, but like, yeah, I had to do a bunch of advertising on Twitter. We we. Uh, we've had the benefit of being able to uh, run a couple Kickstarters before this. Before this, we did one for Nobody's Princess. And before that, we did one for uh, Marcus's title, which is Thunderguard. And both got successfully funded, but it was a little bit of a, uh, a struggle down uh, towards the end. Like, it really came down to the end, like we were biting our nails. So do you um, think maybe, like, Mark, like doing this on Marcus's, like, platform kind of helped having those... Uh, previous like kickstarters be notified of a new project oh that's what, K kickstarter does that right they they notify you like previous people like of new projects mm -hmm. yeah if you're still on the email list so like it was a big benefit to have for those people that were interested in those stories uh get notified about this one and it helped too because we got to learn a lot about like the kickstarter process about the algorithm and we learned that we really should have been building our audience like as soon as possible so like as soon as we got um, our artist, the wonderful, amazing, fantastic Raphael Dantes on the project. Like, we're like, let's do it. Like, so we announced the project, I think. Let's go. I think it was the beginning of this year. I think it was the beginning of this year in January where we announced it to the public. And like, of course we got nobody because uh, <laughs> I got no, I had no followers at the time. I created my <laughs> Twitter like October of last year. And I barely had done like maybe two tweets up until the announcement of it. So I didn't have an audience. I had to build an audience, uh, build followers. So what'd you, you do know? to do that? Man, I, I'm i very grateful and very thankful to have people that have done this before. Like big shout out to May Apple and to the wonderful people to behind there, the, the, the duo. Um, they've been like giving me uh, Senko, especially, she's been giving me like lots of good tips on like how to like build an audience. So like being regular in your posting, um, you know, using hashtags, um, getting involved in the conversation too. Nobody just likes a spam bot, you know. You get involved, be part of the be a part of the community. Like we it's have true. so many awesome people in this community. Like honestly, like uh, I, I stayed away from Twitter as a whole mostly because I knew like growing up is kind of like. That's kind of a cesspool. <laughs> so like indie comics, those is like this wonderful like little slice. Of, like, Isn't Twitter. it crazy? Yeah, and like everyone's so supportive of each other. Like we're just trying to like make our dreams come true and make some <clears throat> awesome stories. So like it's it's awesome, honestly. So speaking of story, um, we uh, find ourselves in a world much like our own. Five percent of America's population are metahumans, cursed with the useless. In, with useless and lucrous powers. So what's up with the useless powers? Like what type of useless powers are we gonna see? We're gonna see a lot of useless powers, my dude. <laughs> Lots of useless powers. So uh, I won't give away this villain. I'll give away the next villain a little bit. The next villain, her power, she can sing to birds. That's her power. And like the birds can talk to her. She's sort of like a rift on a Disney princess parody sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the thing, like I, Yubi's, I like the idea of mutants, like again, x Men, it's like their genetic genes are like mutating, you know? Um, so, and, I can only imagine someone talking to birds, like, that would be very problematic if she was just like, yo, go peck this dude's eyes out, like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Then you have like a wave of birds like coming at you, that would be very, very troublesome. It can be, so that's the thing, like, it's useless on the surface, but like these people either through their heroism or through their bitterness, they found ways to like make it work in their favor. Um, like just bitterly singing to a bird, like attack. <laughs> yes, <laughs> take over. Oh man, oh, you're gonna like that next issue. Oh, you're gonna like that next issue. <laughs> um, 
but yeah yeah so it's like the idea of like so our genes mutate like that's how we get blue eyes so we get different like hair colors our mm-hmm. genes mutate but like they're useless like no one's benefiting like per se from having blue eyes over brown eyes you know mm-hmm. other than maybe like getting more attention at the bar or something like that you know um but so like that's the sort of thing too is like i don't wanted their powers to be sort of reflective like they're not going to be like immediately uh like useful like you have to think and you have to strategize and like put yourself in the best positions to like make good use of your powers i, I think doing that really helps you amplify it you know you're not going to be just relying on like classic tropes and stuff you, you could add like a variety of spice you know in your own way of storytelling because like you could control like just how good or just how useless these abilities are it's awesome man yeah yeah that's part of it too like again like you mentioned earlier like it's that under god underdog like story you know it's hard to believe in an underdog when they got the best powers yeah and like everyone believes in them but like these guys with nothing and like everyone kind of like kind of ticked off at them it's like it's easier to root for them like i love naruto exactly because of that you know like everyone hates naruto because he's a bum and he's a brat you know and mm-hmm. he can't do nothing but because he works hard and he's determined and he's he's a badass he's, he's stubborn but he's a badass yeah and he's scrappy too so he gets it man like and he becomes this god basically he becomes Dude, a god uh, man but the thing is we don't get enough love for rock lee when rock lee did like the drunken fist such oh, a badass dude for real can we be, can we put some respect on his name bro rock lee is amazing i love rock lee. Ah, He's dude. My oh man i um, love it I loved when uh, he went up against Gara, but the drunken fist was probably one of my favorites because he, he just he's getting wasted, dude. And then he's like, I'm ready to go. Let's do it. <laughs> and he kicked butt. He absolutely kicked butt. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Beautiful artwork as well. I'm definitely loving the, the colors, but this line work is just so incredible and detailed. Oh, yeah. Rafael Dantes, he's, he's something else, man. He's something else. Like, we really trying to hone in on that like silver age feel because silver age was just wild and like that's the sort of like vibe i'm trying to channel in here like a modern take on like silver age which Mm -hmm. sounds like really redundant but (laughs) um yeah so like he he fits the style to a t and his artwork like that's just amazing i'm blown away by every new page he just gives bringing forth uh, the platinum age Mm, the platinum age. I like that. I, I know. I, 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 I had to say it so it was officially coined. You heard it here first. Trademark. So right, the concept, though. Uh, love letter to all things superhero teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I grew up uh, like a lot of people did. Like during the mid-2000s. Wow. Uh, when you had like Teen Titans, animated Teen Titans. You had X-Men Evolution. You had... Uh, Static Shock, like all these like superhero teams. You had the Justice League, the Bruce Tim animated Justice League. Mm-hmm. Like those are superhero teams that like really inspire me just because they had this they had this chemistry and they also had this weight behind them. If you get what I'm talking about. Yeah, like, yeah. The Teen Titans, like they had these perfectly five balanced personalities and they played off each other. Perfectly. I really liked how they did each season based off of each character. Like Tara was supposed to get her own season, but that's when they cut it. I'm pretty sure. Oh, right? they did? Yeah, uh, I, th- no, I, I think that was like, that. yeah, yeah. Cause each, each season like focused on one character in particular as like kind of like the primary protagonist. Uh huh. Um, <sighs> it, dude, it was awesome. Yeah. And then uh, they recently just reintroduced uh, Red X, the second Red X. Uh, into the um, what Teen Titans Academy? It, dude, it yeah, was insane. Teen Titans Academy. Yeah, I saw that. I saw. It. I haven't kept up with it just because they've been teasing me with that. And I'm like, ah, I gotta wait till a trade just so I can get it all done. It's so it's good, good, man. It's good. And I'm one of those that if you tease me long enough, I'm just gonna get upset at you. Like, <laughs> so, I don't know how you. Uh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say how you feel about that Spider-Man that before the Nick Spencer Spider-Man. Uh, what do you mean? Well, uh, like it had that sort of thing too. Like it, it teased the reveal of like uh, a very important, like mystery in the story, but it teased it for like forty issues. And, oh, like, oh, was... so um, I've read a lot of Spider-Man off and on. I'm not exactly sure if I read that um, particular part. Um, are you talking about? You're not talking about like the Ben Riley stuff, are you? No, not the Ben Riley okay. stuff. That's that's more recent. Have you read the Ben? Ra- have you read the Ben Riley stuff? I took. 
I took a little sabbatical from Spider-Man. I, I, I love the teams that they had going. I love Patrick Gleason. I love uh, everyone they had over there, Kelly Thompson. Um, but after that Spider-Man run, I'm like, I need a, I need a little breather. I need a little yeah, Spider-Man like, detox. <laughs> they didn't know what they wanted to do with Ben Riley, And like, I don't know. I, Which I, is so sad. Yeah. yeah it's so sad. All right. Let, let's pull it in, though, because, man... Once I find someone, like, that's what I do. Like, when I'm not doing indie comics, I'm covering, like, the DC and Marvel books, too. So, I can talk about that all night. But we're here for one thing and one thing only, only and that's uh, that's Ubi's. And this is going to be a full-length, full-color, ongoing title um, with on uh, Odyssey Comics. So, is this going to be something, like, where you're going to be doing Kickstarters for issue two and three as well? Or are you going to just publish them on uh, Odyssey Comics? So, yeah, that's the plan right now. We're going to... Uh, finish this one. We're gonna finish this one strong, and then from then on, uh, we're gonna probably also do them on Kickstarter. Um, just because it's good, it's good for the brand, like to get it out there, and it's mm -hmm. good to like help build the audience too. Like people get to be involved and they get to feel like they're contributing to something, which they are. Thank you very much, everyone that's contributed. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. And we get to do like cool stuff with it. Like we've been talking about like different stuff to do for rewards. And like we try to get really like outside the box because this is fun, man. Like whenever you get the chance to do this again, so let's 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 make some fun to that, something fun out of it. Dude, that's know? so awesome! I, I'm definitely loving the energy with it. Um, and here is uh, the cover as well as mm -hmm. some of the pages is, uh, that we can see right here. And like I said, the coloring, um, I could definitely see that Silver Age vibe on it, like the color. Um, it's gorgeous though. Oh yeah, uh, Marcus McNeil, man, he did an outstanding job on those like he doesn't get enough props as an artist because he's an amazing businessman don't get me wrong this man's an amazing businessman hardest working man in the industry uh but he's also just an amazing artist and colorist on top of that like he he really honed in on that like you said he honed in on that silver age like john ramita spider-man let's uh steve ditko uh fantastic four that's sort of like that sort of vibe from it you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he's. It, it's. Uh, I just can't go on enough about like the amazing job they did. It's one thing to write a script, and then it's another to hand it to like these other people, and you know, like hope that they like it for one, and then mm -hmm. hope like what they make out of it is like something that's close to uh, what you picture it. And like these guys knocked it out of the park because honestly, I'll tell you, like this is better than what I pictured it. Like, yeah, I, this looks phenomenal. Is, is this uh this is the speedster right here losing his speed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite pages. I love that reaction right there at the bottom. That's my oh man. Uh, hey, dude, it's awesome. Yeah. Um. So you said these uh, UBs were kind of like outcasts, but it seems like uh these uh UBs wear that symbol like with pride. So that is it's gonna be like sort of a sort of you. Know, <sighs> How do I put this? Like, so it's so hated that it's become counterculture almost. It's I almost gotcha. become counterculture. It's like a like, throwback against the man. Against the man, yeah. yeah. So like, if you're, you're if you're popular, you're not gonna be wearing one of these. But if you want to be one of those kids that's like, oh yeah, I want to go against the popular crowd, I'm gonna you're be gonna, wearing yeah. one of these. I gotcha. So it's it's in there it's in there like there's some people as we'll like get along in the story that don't want to be identified with the UPs like at all um and like that creates drama for the team that creates drama for the story you know because like it's like what you're hiding who you are you know you don't want to be seen with us you know like mm -hmm. you ashamed of us like what's wrong <laughs> you know so that's uh that's uh, that's the sort of drama teen angst that I, I want to get into you know I love that stuff and then we already broke down some of the characters, but here are some of the other ones. Uh, Peter Lane, AKA Speeder. Uh, that's the one that uh, we've seen uh, lost uh, his speed and collapsed uh, from yeah. exhaustion. <laughs> so he could only run for five steps. Just about, just about. Like I really want it to be almost compared to like a bullet chamber. So like, you know, like one of those, I don't know, 46 magnets or something like that. It's like, you got six shots. So he's got six steps. Um, so what, what what does he do like it does he take five and then take a breath like how long does that last for uh in my mind that usually lasts until he gets his win back so you know peter's a teenager those guys they recover pretty fast but like even then that takes a toll on him so he can recover i'd say maybe give him a couple minutes 
uh, and then like you can do it again, but like next time it's gonna take him like four or five minutes. You know. So is it like like a, like a speed run charge up power attack basically? Yeah, basically. I gotcha. Basically. I gotcha. So we got Jason uh, able to morph any one part of his body um, that he can think of. So the best and worst power for a teenage boy to. Have. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Jason is the the jokester of the group. He loves trolling people and he loves annoying people for his own amusement. So, like, what better power to have than to like, mm -hmm. be able to morph into anything? Uh, is one body part. I don't want to give him too much because that just makes him overpowered. If you can just yeah. morph into anything, yeah. it's like, no, you get one. You can no, and there's a lot of fun things you could do with that, too. I mean, I'm just trying to think of all the different ways that he could just be a class clown. Um, this this definitely like I was a class clown in high school, so I definitely uh, I love this character, man. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, good, good. And then we have a uh, Doomer, uh, the powerhouse of the the UB. So is T kind of like the the strength with a uh, huge eyebrows? He is the strength of the team. He that's the part of it. He has the strength, he has the ability, but he doesn't have the confidence. So he always holds himself back from oh no, what he could be, um, you know. So. If he really put his mind to it, like he could just wreck people, bro. He could just wreck people if he mm -hmm. wanted to. But it's getting to that point. And then he'd like, be too powerful, right? He would be too powerful. So that's the part of it. It's like he's got the great strength, but he doesn't have the great um, mental ability to do it. No, I got gotcha. you. Um, and that's part part of it, part from his power, part from uh, just how he is. He works little tidbit. He works in a, a restaurant owned by his family, so he's always lugging those. 50 pound bags of flour, sugar, put it in that work, you know? And we already talked about brain food. So we have Garrett, uh, the uh, residential sarcastic wise man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love fourth wall characters, uh, fourth wall breaking characters. I love Deadpool for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, so this, he's my attempt at a fourth wall. Like, if you knew you were in a comic book, he's, if you knew you were in a comic book, but you knew the comic book was pretty chill, you know, like, if you, if you knew you were, like, in a comic book, like, Injustice, DC Injustice, where, like, they're killing people left and right, you'd be kind of scared, you'd be kind of paranoid. Yeah, but, yeah. But this is a pretty chill story, so he's pretty chill with it, too. He's like, I know, like, whatever happens. Like, Dude, uh... Day, so when you start reading Teen Titans Academy, if you go, uh, because they went, uh, and bled into the, uh, the War for Earth 3 with the Suicide Squad, um, uh -huh. They they team up with Ambush Bug, and Ambush Bug is a wall breaking uh, DC character. I think you're gonna love it because Ambush Bug Ooh. definitely sounds like right up your alleyway. Ooh, okay. I'll keep an eye out for him. I'll keep an eye out for him. Yeah, man. So, like, so what else is he able to do? Like, what's his power outside of breaking the fourth wall? Like, what type of advantage does that give him? So the advantage it gives him is like, if you know that you're in a story and you've seen enough stories, you can sort of see how the story is going to be, right? Mm -hmm. So he's the type of person that like, oh, someone comes in, presents himself as an ally to the team. He's like, you know, that guy, he's kind of, it's kind of suspect. I'm pretty sure he's going to like betray us like in eight pages. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> you know, so it's like he's able to, they, he calls them spoilers. He's able to give people spoilers. Mm -hmm. so I can, he can spoil like what's gonna happen for the team now whether they believe him whether they acknowledge it or not like that's another thing so and then we know. have uh tabitha 50 50 uh 50 /50. so uh i noticed her one hairstyle was buns and now it's uh and does her hairstyle change a lot as well yeah she's got like this she's got a lot of uh different looks for her like we gave her like especially like in the initial like concept creation like we had like two or three different ones i think and uh this is the one that marcus went with and i think it looks great mm -hmm. um i love uh yeah she just she has a bunch of different and i kind of like characters that have like different styles too, yeah you know so yeah. mix it up then uh we have the fashion disaster the high school teen queen yes, so uh, she I was gonna say uh, something. Uh, looks like her ability is uh, with her stylish sleeves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she can shoot out her sleeves uh, and like use them as ropes. So she can sl sl uh, sling them out. She can grab someone with her sleeves, like fling them around. Mm -hmm. But if her sleeves gets like damaged or cut, like she's basically done for. It's so, like, ah, can't do nothing. You know? Okay. So, yeah, you make sure to give each of these characters an Achilles tendon. I can really respect that. And a lot of their powers are completely different than anything I've ever really heard of. 
Last but not least, though, we have the mayor. So the mayor is a uh, part of the team. He is the team, not owner. He's the team manager. I'll put it like mm -hmm. that. He's the team manager. So J G J Jeremiah Graham Jackson. He is the manager of the team. He is also the uncle of the leader of the team, Justin Headlights. So is that what's his, was it? Uh, excuse me. Is uh, his name like a, a nod to like uh, Jonah James uh, Jameson? Ugh. I can't. Yes, I got tongue tied is. there. Uh, cause I, <laughs> wait, 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 when you said it, I was like, "Hold on!" Like the way you said it, and the way like, uh, like the cadence of it, I was like, "That sounds familiar." Yes, it is. So like, I for for JGJ and Justin, I really wanted to make sure that their names had like this Silver Age like ring to it, cause you know, like Peter Parker, oh mm -hmm. Bruce Banner had this like fanatic like niceness to it. So I wanted uh, Justin and his uncle to both have this like niceness to it that like sort of remind you like especially like yeah like jjj exactly like that yeah so uh he's the team manager he uh lets justin his uh nephew create the team basically under his watch and he uses the team basically as like fodder not fodder he uses it as uh political for his political benefit I got gotcha. you. Uh, he gets the Y gene demographic because he's supporting. But that almost y has gene. to work against him uh, with the people who are anti Y gene, right? Yes, a little bit, a little bit. He's kind of short sighted in that way. <laughs> he's like, I'm, I'm ahead. He's uh, campaigning, and his campaign uh, is like barely ahead. So he wants to give himself a little bit more breathing room. It's like, oh, gotcha. there's like five percent of the population in the city that is like undecided and it just happened to be YG. If I make a YG team, you know, it's like, oh, they'll, I'll get that 5% and I'll win easy, you know? No, I gotcha. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. now we have the creative team. So we have starting off with Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. Wonder who he is. <laughs> so uh, just a little bit, uh, newcomer to the comic scene has the honor of being the first creator to publish an open submission with Odyssey Comics. So congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, now, the, for your artist, you have uh, Raf, uh, Raphael. Yeah, Raphael Dantes. Uh, amazing guy, amazing artist. Like, probably probably even better guy than he is an artist, which is saying something. <laughs> and then uh, Marcus, uh, who is uh, the character designer, colors, letterer, and also editor as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's doing like a yeah, whole he, lot. He, so. A one man team. <laughs> basically <laughs> he's been doing he's been doing a lot like uh we had initial character designs done by another amazing artist uh avery Khalid. i think that's how i say his last name um and they were great um and we had these other designs done ah man his name escapes me right now but another amazing artist um but we needed some unification you know we had all these different designs mm -hmm. but we needed some we needed one vision on basically to unify it so he was able to go in there take what they did and make a, a style unify it so that way you know we had that's one so awesome mm -hmm. and so. now we are at your reward so do you want to uh should we go through your tiers first or do you want to go through your rewards first uh we can go through the rewards honestly all right so the first reward it's gonna be the variant cover and this is a really awesome cover i really like this one Oh yeah, yeah. See, this is the gun done by the guy that did the initial. It's a great story. He he did the initial character concepts, um, like like two years ago, and I, I told him about it. He's like, I like your vision. I like your idea, um, and so like he helped me with that. I had never asked for commissions like that before. Ubi's is my first time like doing an original project on my own, so um, it was like he helped me find the the faces of these characters you know mm -hmm. um so so for the fact that he was able to come back we were able to get him back to do the variant cover uh on these characters that he helped create uh, help mold was really something yeah that's awesome man bonus comic uh so you're gonna be offering odyssey's first comic nobody's princess as a digital download for all tiers mm -hmm. done by the fantastic aaron keepers and uh Hitlin uh lard liard i think ah, i can't i have i'm bad with names bro. I'm no bad i did i'm horrible too i yeah i try to <laughs> pronounce your last name and you're like just call me nate just call me yeah. Nate. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah they're great they're great also a fantastic team so we're gonna be getting a hold on one second there we go 
I just noticed that the uh, for whatever reason it uh it switched us over to the wrong screen, so I got it fixed though. So uh, we are on the the te uh, textless print. Uh, own the stunning cover art from UBs as a Kickstarter exclusive 11 by 17 print. Very awesome uh, print as well. I really love it. Um, what what type of uh reward is this for? Uh, like what tier? What 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 kind of stretch goal do you have to hit? I believe that's just the I believe that's the ten dollar one. Um, no, it's the probably it's the fifteen dollar one. Yeah. Um, like honestly, like I love it. Um, it's a great print. The beautiful done. It was the first piece that Raphael sent us from the from the from the from the project, and mm -hmm. I just fell in love with it. Like the moment I saw it, um, we were at C two E two. Uh, me and Marcus and Aaron and I got to see it on like on the Saturday like and I was just blown away I went straight to Walgreens and I printed out like 20 of those bad boys to give out to people at C2E2 so awesome. <laughs> Ooh, school ID trading cards too that is uh, that's a unique way to do the trading cards I got to give you props on that that's awesome we, we love it um we it was inspired uh, uh I'm gonna ask you you probably have but have you ever like seen My Hero Academia? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there'll be sometimes like in between like an episode, like at the midway point or something like that, we'll do a cutaway and like show like the person's like all their powers and their stats mm -hmm. and like have their like student card on there. So that that this was really inspired by that and like I love the idea. It's like, oh yeah, like oh your student ID and it also has like the names, get like information what year high school they're in, their powers a little bit, you know. I, and I, I love how you do the the classification as well. That that was something done by uh, Sun Biscuit. She, Sun Biscuit and Marcus, they came up with that, and like I really want to run with it. Like I was like, that's such a cool detail. I gotta like fold it in into like mm -hmm. the the world building somehow. And then we have die cut vinyl stickers as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the, I, I'm definitely I'm loving all these rewards. Ooh, Odyssey Comics graphic tee. Yes, sir. Yeah, that, that looks nice. Yeah, that is clean. That is ultra clean. So reward bundles. So five dollar uh, digital bundle. You get the digital PDF of UB's issue number one and Nobody's Princess. Uh, are these going to be all the tiers like on the side? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that, that so that's two birds one stone. Perfect. We have yes, the ten dollar physical bundle. This is going to be UB's issue one, the digital PDF, as well as the digital PDF of Nobody's Princess. And then the, only two dollars more for the variant bundle. That is not a bad price. No sir, no sir. We're about giving value in this Kickstarter. Fifteen dollar deluxe bundle gets you the physical of UB's character sticker pack, textless cover print, and then the digital is a UB's one and nobody's princess. Then the double digital for just five bucks more, you're gonna get that variant cover and plus everything listed. The collector's bundle is going to give you a UB's embroidered patch with character card pack as well oh then the um yeah so the patch that sounds really cool is that going to just be the ub's logo yeah i really did want it to be um like the that clean like y figure on mm -hmm. there you know like you just put it on your backpack or no that's your, cool. your jacket you know like sort of like what peter had so i was like that's, uh, that's something i wanted you know Ooh, 50 bucks deluxe collector bundle. You'll get the shirt um, and everything listed. So that's not too bad of a price. I mean, you're basically paying like, what, 20 bucks for the shirt uh, at that yeah. that bundle price. That's that. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Stretch goals. So with the initial budget being relatively low for stretch goals, we're more focused on getting the book into as many hands as possible. So uh, to make things fun, we're offering additional perks that unlock on each tier of backer support. So you get the ske sketch print for 50 backers, and then you have two more hidden um, for your other backers, so 75 is your next Ooh. one. Let's see how close you are to getting that second one. You're getting you're you're right there, 14 away. 14 away? What? Oh yeah, 61. That's right. I got a little scared there. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're getting really close. And hey, this is the last few days. So if anyone's been like peeking and they've been thinking, you know, like now's the time to take the dive. And then we just get a little bit about Odyssey. So do you want to go ahead and like maybe give us a little quick rundown of that? Yeah, so Odyssey Comics was made by Marcus McNeil. He had this dream of making indie comics more approachable because, you know, it can it can be a little bit of a, a hurdle sometimes because sometimes, you know, people just don't know. Um, 
before I found Odyssey, like I was one of those people. I'm like, what do I do to make a comic book? <laughs> uh, and uh, I had the idea, I had the the seed, and I had a script. Um, and that's what Marcus was looking for. He was looking for people that had, you know, these little gems of ideas that could be made into something beautiful. You know, and they, they might have been rough. They might have been, you know, not as good as they could be. But mm -hmm. you do a little polishing, a little touching up, and you make them shine. And uh, that's what Marcus uh, wanted. He wanted to tell stories that we, that people want to tell. You know, we want to try new things. We don't want to try the same old, same old. And because it's been done already, like, and yeah. people already, people already know, like. What, what to expect so like let's throw a curveball let's throw like give them something fun to read let's give them something that they'll, they'll remember you know how many issues, want to say how many issues are you looking to have uv's run man do i give you the unrealistic answer or I give you the realistic answer i, I, I whatever's best for you um whatever okay. whatever you know whatever whatever feels best <laughs> okay okay if ub's number one sells a million copies and we get all the money in the world i want to do a hundred issues let's go but i'm realistic i understand um that money does not grow on trees uh and this is a new ip and i know it with no clout um so mm, no if clout. i got to <laughs> no i got no clout man i got no clout uh if i got to 12 issues i'd be happy okay if i got to 24 issues i'd be ecstatic mm -hmm. and if i got to 36 issues i'd be the happiest man in the world. so well, 12 go. issues right now is the is the goal for anyone that is watching um that is kind of on the fence about backing your kickstarter um what would you like to say to them to kind of push them over to get them to go ahead and and back that project with uh five days to go well i do uh what i would say is you know uv's is a really special project to me and it was so much fun to write like the concept from concept to writing i i busted out laughing in my chair so many times and uh i got a couple moments uh planned in there that uh, hopefully will rock your boat hopefully have you slapping your knee and bending over laughing mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be a good time like no matter what i want you bees to be a good time so if you put down five dollars, I promise you those five dollars are gonna be well spent. I promise you those five dollars are gonna be put to making some of the at least most fun comics you ever read. I don't know the best comics you ever read, but at least a fun time. You know, you'll read it and you'll have a good time, and you can pass it along to someone else too. Like I, that's what I really care about. I care about people reading. It. At this point. Let's go, let's go. So, Nathaniel, I got to ask you one of the most important questions of this interview because every time I do an interview, I always like it to be somewhat of a learning tool for anyone watching. So, with that being said, for anyone that's out there struggling to kind of do what you're doing, to just get to writing and creating a story of their own dream and passions, what type of advice or words to wisdom would you give them to just get going with it? Ooh, let me see how many cliches I can fit into one sentence. Uh, <laughs> don't give up. Believe in your dreams. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, it literally is just like have an idea you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. If you're just writing just to write, you're not gonna get nothing done. You have to have a passion behind it. If you have a fire for the thing that you want to write, a fire for the thing you want to say, um, then it'll give you it'll give you the determination to keep going on. Because you know what, right now. Uh, unless you're a millionaire right now and you want to start writing, you're going to have to do, you're going to have to work, you're going to have to go to school, you're going to have chores, you're going to have life. So all these things, all these roadblocks are going to come ahead of you. Mm -hmm. If you have enough fire, if you have enough passion for what you're, what the story you want to tell, you're going to do it in regardless. Like UBs is something I would be doing if nobody read it. If only one person backed this Kickstarter, I would still be writing the next 10 scripts for it because Let's I love go. it and i want to see the end of it um, i want to surprise myself with it so do that you want to you have that fire have that determination mm -hmm. have that dream and like hold it and like believe in yourself like um i had this like um interaction when i was first promoted it's like well i kind of want to be a comic book writer like i'm i'm a, i introduced myself to this person i was like oh i'm a wannabe comic book writer and they said stop you wrote this comic and i said yeah that you're a comic book writer yeah so do that you're a comic book writer if you write it doesn't matter what if you're a novelist screenwriter comic book writer if you wrote it 
you are that thing. You let's know? go let's go hey and you drew it you are an artist you are a comic book writer you're successfully funded i mean your book's getting funded your book's getting printed i mean you have the pdf like look at you you're out here doing the damn thing and doing it right and you did it without a lot of promotion like i we were talking about earlier there's a lot of po uh, people out there getting on like 20 30 podcasts in a month uh this is your first one with five days to go <laughs> <laughs> hey man we're here for it we're here for it hey but with that being said i think this is a perfect opportunity to wrap things up nathaniel thank you so much for coming on breaking down ubs your experiences as an indie comic creator and so much more i appreciate it everyone that's tuned in not only once but twice today we appreciate that so much above and beyond and guys most importantly have an awesome wednesday i'm gonna be tuning in for the last episode of moon Knight. but most importantly i'm gonna be keeping it geekly